Hey guys, Greg here on the Vinyl Rundown, a special edition of my show uh, where we're going to talk about the abolition movement, the civil rights movement, black America, and what's going on in the world today and in America today. And this is really because I found this record in my collection. This is the autobiography, The Life and Times of Frederick Douglass. This video is really about history and not about politics. I'm not really interested in getting into uh, any political arguments with with anybody but I do think it's important to understand our history there's a lot of history here that people should know but just just don't for whatever reason and I don't claim to be woke I don't claim to know anything about the black experience this is just records I have and this is what my channel is about music and records so Frederick Douglass born into slavery his mother was a slave his father was most likely a white man taught himself to read at a young age, got in trouble for doing that, uh, was beaten on a regular basis, eventually turned around and beat up uh, one of his masters at one point and escaped from slavery multiple times, but ended up being very well read and did quite a bit of writing on the abolition movement and actually was friends with Abraham Lincoln and was an ally of the Republican Party, which Abraham Lincoln was the first president of, as you may know. And the reader is Brock Peters. And you may know Brock Peters as one of the stars of To Kill a Mockingbird, the movie, where he played the uh, black man wrongly accused of raping a white woman. Yes, I just happen to have that on vinyl, the soundtrack anyway, uh, with Gregory Peck. So Brock Peters, also, I just happened to figure this out the other day, is on this record, a Miles Davis record, the Jack Johnson story. Brock Peters... Uh, does the voice of Jack Johnson. And I didn't really know who Jack Johnson was, and I don't think most Americans do. Jack Johnson was really the first black mega sports star. He was the first black heavyweight champion in, in the field of boxing, obviously. And uh, that fact may have annoyed some white people back in the day. We're talking 1905, 1910, around then. And they arranged uh, a boxing match with him and a white guy. That was that was the match of the century at the time. And, and and the white guy was the great white hope. Because for some reason, you take a lot of pride in your race, whether a black man or a white man wins the boxing match. Like, like does anybody care today? I don't really care who wins. It doesn't have to be a Jewish guy. Uh, you know, I'd have some pride, but I wouldn't, like, freak out about it. Anyway, uh... Jack Johnson won that match, that boxing match, and there was massive rioting after that. There was rioting in a dozen U.S. cities. Many people killed, a couple dozen people were killed, hundreds of people arrested. Anyway, Jack Johnson um, got himself into trouble by uh, hanging out and marrying uh, and dating white women, and he was actually arrested for uh, what's called transporting a woman across state lines for immoral purposes and was sentenced to I don't know how long but he served almost a year in prison and only just a few years ago actually Sylvester Stallone who was involved in boxing went to the president and asked him to give a posthumous pardon so Jack Johnson was pardoned from his federal felony charges in 2018 by President Trump believe it or not uh, so this actually is a soundtrack to a documentary that was made about Jack Johnson in the early 70s and Miles Davis did the soundtrack and it's sort of a bitches brew style uh, fusion funk. You can watch the movie on YouTube. I don't think it's that great. There's a newer one by Ken Burns that just came out a few years ago. The story of Jack Johnson supposed to be better but Jack Johnson I don't think is a name that that many people know about and important person in uh, black history. Okay, moving on to some other records I have. Um, okay, you all know this lady, Billie Holiday, Lady Day, one of the most famous singers of her era. This is not the record that has the famous song on it. Uh, the famous song that I'm going to talk about is one of the most important songs of the civil rights movement that she sang called Strange Fruit, and that record came out in 1939, so that was in the 78 RPM era, not LPs. That song has been re-released on different LPs and CDs. Uh, that song is not on here. 
Uh, this is a more lush sort of traditional jazz vocal record. But that song Strange Fruit, if you don't know what it's about, you got to listen to it uh, on YouTube or whatever. The strange fruit that she's referring to is the bodies of hanged black men hanging from southern trees. But that is a haunting, scary song with, with, with Billie Holiday's um, the crying in her voice, the soulfulness, the uh, the song will make you freaking cry. It's really it's really sad and scary and, and horrifying. Um, actually, that song started out as a poem written by a guy named Abel Maripol, and he wrote this as a poem in reaction to lynching and a famous f photograph of lynching. And uh, he and his wife eventually put it to music, and Billie Holiday was the first to record it. It's been recorded by a lot of people since then. But Abel Maripol was also famous uh, as an activist. Uh, in addition to writing a few things that turn into songs, uh, he actually adopted the orphaned children of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. And that was the first husband and wife couple that was executed. Maybe the only one that's ever been executed in American history. They were executed for... Um, espionage, giving uh, secrets to the Russians, I guess mil uh, military or nuclear secrets. And Maripol was actually a devout communist and, and, and followed that, uh, was involved in that party and activism. But most people don't know that about the song Strange Fruit. It was written by a white Jewish guy from New York. Okay, got an, one more person to talk to you about. And I happen to have three records by this person, and I already stuck a couple of them up there so you could see and not that many people know about this guy Paul Robeson a famous singer from mostly the first half of the 20th century this record is called A Man and His Beliefs he actually played college football with Rutgers at Rutgers studied law got a law degree went and played in an NFL for a while and thought he was going to have a career uh, as a lawyer and after practicing law, or at least trying to practice law, just for a brief period of time, he, he, he concluded that because of racism, a black man could not make a living practicing law in America. And we're again talking about like 19, I don't know, 1920s, something like that. But he turned his career to uh, stage and screen, singing and acting. And you guys all know his f very famous uh, singing role, Old Man River, in the song Showboat, this big booming baritone voice. Old Man River. That was Paul Robeson. That's his most famous role. But he also became very active in the civil rights movement. Let's see if any of these other songs uh, mention anything. He also became active in communism and cozied up with the Russians and went to Russia. And uh, the U.S. government wasn't real pleased with that, believe it or not. Uh, what other tunes? Okay, here's another record called Paul Robeson Favorite Songs. I'm sorry, I, I blew through this without telling you what it is. Paul Robeson, American Balladeer on Everest Records. So Paul Robeson, like I said, did not make friends with the U.S. government. He was blacklisted. His career was basically destroyed. And uh, he had what seemed to be mental problems. He was given ele electroshock therapy. He was treated by some psychiatrists that might not have been working in his best interest. And uh, actually, uh, his son to this day, or I don't know if his son is still alive, but his son back in the day uh, maintained that Paul Robeson's career and life were destroyed by agents in the US government because of his uh, involvement with the Soviets and communism and that's kind of controversial you can look that up on uh, different articles on the web but um, that's a shame if our government would go to that length to uh, hurt someone because of their political beliefs. I'm a believer in political free speech, all free speech. In a free country, we're not supposed to be uh, persecuting people because of their political beliefs. Um, th that's about all I wanted to say about the records, you guys. Um, look into your records and see if there's any history there. I think I should probably take this one and record it and put it on YouTube because I don't think there's any recordings uh, available of it on YouTube because you, some of you people might want to listen to it for historical reasons. And in fact, I'd be happy to donate these records if there's any charity, public interest group, civil rights group that wants them. They're not worth much. Um, these were given to me by a relative who retired. These, this I bought for, I think I bought it for a buck or two. It's got a price tag on it. Maybe they're all given to me by the same person. I don't know. I'd be happy to donate these to uh, 
any common civil rights oriented group, uh, if there's one out there, that can get better use out of it than me, because I'm not going to sit here and listen to all those. I got 3,000 records. I don't have time to listen to them. Guys, that's, uh, that's kind of my take on the historical significance of some of the records in my collection. Uh, again, I really do not want to see any hateful comments in the uh, comment section down here. You may get deleted. This is really about uh, coming together and learning about our history that not enough people know about. And uh, I wish peace and love to everybody on the planet. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to the Vinyl Rundown, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.